But welcome to our November meeting of the Land Information Advisory Council. Thank you for accommodating this Zoom meeting. You can see behind me, the State Library is in a little bit of chaos right now as we are going through a move. So we hope to be back and, and settled in a new location. And you'll hear a little bit more about that in, in the meeting updates, but um, we appreciate your patience as we're going through this process and meeting with us virtually today. Let's go ahead and do introductions. I'm Jenny Stapp, I'm the State Librarian, and I'm Chair of the Land Information Advisory Council. And I'll just go ahead and call on you. Erin, do you wanna introduce yourself? Yep, good morning, everyone. Erin Fashaway, State GIS Coordinator. And Matt Trebish. Yeah, Matt Trebish with the uh, Montana State Library, GIS Analyst. Troy. Yeah, good morning. Troy Blanford, uh, GIS Analyst and Lead Our Water Information Program. Let's see, Mike Powell. Uh, good morning, uh, Mike Powell, uh, Yellowstone County. GIS manager uh, and mega president. Thanks for being with us, Mike. Thank you. Alan. Alan, if you're with us, it looks like you're on mute. Sorry about that. Hi, Alan Armstrong with the Bureau of Land Management in Billings, Montana. I'm on a funky setup with three different screens here so yeah uh, i'll probably turn it off because otherwise i look this way and then i look that way and <laughs> i look really dumb That's um, funny. good to be here fair enough thanks alan uh, mike bosleman good morning mike bosleman i'm the cio at the department of transportation one of the state government uh, representatives good morning thanks for being with us brandy Good morning, Brandy Holstein, uh, representative for Department of Revenue, GIS Specialist. And Brian Collins. Good morning, Brian Collins, uh, GIS Program Manager, Montana DNRC. Don Anderson. Don Anderson with Montana Fish, Wildlife, and Parks. I'm the Geographic Data Services Bureau Chief. And Emily Dardis. Good morning, Emily Dardis. I am the legal intern with the Office of the Governor. Uh, Eric. Good morning, everyone. Eric Spangberg. I'm with Lewis and Clark County City of Helena GIS office. I am the representative for the professional GIS state people. And Kevin Loberg. Good morning, I'm Kevin Loberg. I'm the State GIS Specialist with USDA NRCS. And Lee? Good morning, uh, Lee Mackholz, the GIS Manager for the City of Missoula. I am a local government representative. Uh, Lisa Anderson. Lisa, if you're with us, it looks like you're muted. Matt Heller, why don't you introduce yourself? Matt Heller, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, DOI representative, and located in Bozeman. Good to see you, Matt. Valentin. Good morning, Valentin Hoff. Work at the Fire Center at the University of Montana, represent the Montana University System. Rebecca. Good morning, I'm Rebecca Camp. I'm a data coordinator at the Montana State Library. Who did I miss? Anyone? All right. Our first order of business is approval of the executive summary from our September 15th meeting. And I've, I've been informed that I can do these um, motions more simply. So are there any corrections or additions to the executive summary?
All right, hearing none, those minutes stand approved. Mike, you want to share the MAGIP update? Uh, yeah, thank you um, for allowing me to give this update. Uh, it's only been two months, so not a lot more I can update. Um, we've had a uh, task force assigned to uh, help us determine our uh, membership fee increases. Um, we feel that that uh, task force has come to a consensus on what we want to do, and we are going to start moving forward with that. Uh, we are looking into implementing that with a wild apricot that we use for our, our, our administration stuff. And uh, Michelle from Full, Full, Full Scope is looking into that as well as to if we can do it or not. It's, it's looking very promising that we'd be able to implement this pretty simply, actually. Uh, last month, Esri made its rounds around the state. Um, there was a, it initially visited Helena. We uh, sponsored a meetup there, uh, had a great turnout. Uh, a couple weeks later, they came over to the east side of the state and visited a few of us uh, here in Billings and then Yellowstone, in the city of Billings and Yellowstone County. Uh, had a great, great time in, with them here. Um, yesterday was GIS day. Uh, I hope everybody was able to attend some of the meetups, we had four of them this year, which we sponsored, which I thought was great. Uh, there was one in Helena, yes, two days ago, uh, one in Billings, one in Bozeman, and one in Missoula. I'm not sure which one is tonight. There's one tonight, and the, the, the other two were last night. Uh, I'm not sure. I, I heard that Helena had about 15 people show up, which not as good. Um, Billings had about 10 to 15. I'm not sure about the other ones yet. Uh, Great attendance, great, just great sitting down with people and talking to people and enjoying. Uh, just I see on the chat that Missoula is the one tonight, so uh, it was just great to be with people and uh, talking to them and just getting them, getting other people that are maybe not involved with makeup or anything uh, together uh, locally. So yeah, it, it turned out really nice. Um, We've had a couple a couple meetings now to start the conference uh, for Bozeman that's coming up this year in April. Uh, we've already had some uh, great responses for workshops. Uh, things move, seem to be moving along really well with that already. Um, so that's that's good to hear. Um, we are looking for a theme at the moment and uh, for the conference. If anybody has any ideas, please let one of our make a board members know and we'll get it to the appropriate people uh, we'll vote on it uh, we have a few suggestions already but uh, if you guys know anything within the next couple of days or something feel free to email us uh, eric spanglinger spanglinger is, is uh, a representative for us so you, you can get it to him and he'll let us know uh, sorry eric if i messed up your last name there and uh, um Oh, and I'm not sure if anybody's noticed, but our social media presence has been uh, is getting out there more. Uh, it's been greater in the last couple of months, thanks to our communication associates. Uh, we certainly have been starting to advertise ourselves a little bit more, and I I, I think it's been going well. Uh, we're looking for in, to an additional in addition to having all the advertisements for the conference and stuff. And the, the meetups and stuff would like to have you know some some stories out there of people you know doing some stuff, and uh, we want the rest of the state to know about it. And uh, if you have that, please let us know. We can certainly give a little quick blurb out to you out to the state, you know, letting everybody know, giving you credit and everything. And uh, I, I, we all want to know what people are doing around the state, you know, GIS wise. Uh, we would like to get it out there to everybody. So uh, please let us know if that's if there's some some story that you want to get out there. Um, other than that, that's about all I got. Any questions for Mike? Again, I appreciate you being here and, and thanks for the reminder of the importance of getting 
information out about what we do, I think that that social media work is really important. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Aaron, I'll turn things over to you for the GIS coordinators report. Thank you. I'm just going to share my screen here. Oh, that date is wrong. Okay, um, I just wanted to do a quick update on um, the what we've been working on in regards to the strategic goals. Um, it just is just a, a, a place here for a reminder. Um, the first goal we started working on is improved communications with geospatial stakeholders. We have a business plan that we've um, adopted and are starting to put into place um, with our internal teams. And so we're starting to um, to work on that. The next um, the next goal that we're going to be working on is create and strengthen partnerships. Um, I know that's number three on the list. Um, however, it's an easier uh, business plan to accomplish, and their AppGeo is going to take a pretty deep dive on develop policies and best practices. Um, and then continue on with the rest of those goals. Um, so we've had internal, some internal kickoff meetings um, to get the work started on the second goal and uh, improving communications. Um, we've been coordinating with Esri to see where they can assist specifically with the hub and galleries. We have a lot of information that's out there and available, and um, it seems to make sense to use some of those tools that we have um, and some of the software that we have access to and get assistance from <clears throat> Esri with that. And then AppGeo is working on finalizing the business plan for creating and strengthening partnerships. Um, this is just a reminder of some of the objectives that we're working on for improving communication um, <clears throat> for GIS coordination. And so the first objective is to define audiences and appropriate communication methods. So this is basically developing templates and audiences. Um, those have all been defined um, and how we communicate moving forward using some new tools um, or continue to use newer tools like GovDelivery. Um, and things like that. And then objective two would be incoming communication pathways for support requests and public inquiries um, being clearly defined. Um, so that was one of our um, identified weaknesses in our SWOT analysis is that it's difficult to find some of our information. And so um, we are working on um, doing a deep dive into our our web our website and how we um, how we serve out our information. And um, we are also looking into ServiceNow as um, being that main source for um, um, support requests coming in. So um, looking at, looking forward to getting, um, to moving there, uh, to moving to ServiceNow. We've moved there. I know a lot of other state agencies are working on um, support request pathways as well. And um, we're just looking forward to, to getting on board and using ServiceNow, it's a support um, system that the state invested in a few years ago. And then um, again, I, I kind of, I guess, let the cat out of the bag in the f number two, but um, we're, we're working on restructuring web content um, for ease of use and discoverability, and then creating a schedule as objective for um, an event schedule or a calendar um, that's maintained so folks can understand um, all the events that we attend and where, um, uh, where we're at and how folks can get in contact with us. Uh, here are some of the training and outreach activities that we've completed um, over the past few months. Uh, we have attended the National States Geographic Information Council meeting in, uh, that's the annual conference in Portland, and Brandy Holstein uh, was the council rep that got to attend this year. I'm hoping she really enjoyed um, uh, the conference. And then we also brought Melissa Briggs. Um, she is uh, the head of our business office, so she can start to understand um, the ins and outs of GIS. And um, I think it was really fantastic to have her there as well. 
Um, and then Matt Trebish um, was the other person that attended with us. So it was a really great conference and glad to, to be able to attend the annual conference in person again. Um, and we will talk later about attending, having a council rep attend the mid-year meeting that will be uh, at the end of February, beginning of March. And so we'll work on that as well, getting someone registered. Here's some of the counties we visited over the past um, couple months. We've visited Powder River, Macomb, Custer, um, Flathead. And then re just yesterday, we had a team of folks at Fergus County. And as we speak now, we've got a team of folks in Valley. And those, uh, <clears throat> those varied from grant visits to, um, uh, to visits uh, regarding um, elections and then next gen 911. Actually, Custer County did not, I just remembered um, that that visit did not take place and I will update that. Um, and then uh, we attended the Montana Counties Association uh, in September, that was in Billings. That was another really great conference. Again, great to see all the county commissioners in person again. Um, we, for the first time, we exhibited and attended the Montana Planners Association of Planners. Um, there's a lot of planners that serve the role as planner slash GIS coordinator for the counties, especially ones with smaller populations. So it was good to do outreach with those folks. And then the League of Cities and Towns was in October, and then the Montana section of AWRA was, I do believe, in Butte this past October. Um, so it was good to get out and speak with folks. And then another big announcement that Jenny already let on because there's a desk behind her head. <laughs> uh, not, not the way you usually see desks. <laughs> um, we're moving because of the flood. Um, um, we were able to well, downsize our space and find a new um, place for us to reside. And it is the um, an old OPI building. If you're familiar with Helena, um, <clears throat> it is across from Montana Eye Care on the corner of Montana Avenue and 11th. And um, and I did not put the address in there, Jenny. So could you remind us of Fantastic, the address? Fantastic, Erin. 1201 11th. 1201 11th. 1201, I guess I could have zoomed in and seen it on there. There you are, you can see it. Um, <clears throat> so 1201 11th Avenue is where we will be. Uh, we have the whole building. I've been informed it was an old gas station at some point. Um, so we're excited gas to be station moving. on the lot, but the building itself is new, well, new-ish, new-ish. <laughs> Newer-ish. Yeah. So uh, we're excited to be moving there. Uh, we have a small conference room in the first floor. Most of the GIS staff will be on the first floor, so you can find us there. Um, and uh, we'll be holding council meetings in person, probably in the Capitol or another uh, state agency building that has a, um, a, a room large enough for the, for the council. And then another exciting news, I'll let Jenny take this on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we have been going through the process of rebranding the state library. We um, had, well, the way the contractor we're working with described how we were representing ourselves, it was logo a go go. And we've been concerned that people didn't understand the work of the state library and didn't often recognize when they're using state library services. Uh, for example, if you're using the cadastral application, you have to look really, really hard to see any kind of branding that reflects the fact that that, that very heavily used application is a product supported by the state library. And, and that's true of our, a number of our different kinds of programs and services. So we started with an effort to create a logo that will be a unified representation of the State Library, and, and that logo is here for you. The next step in the project is really an educational campaign to target all of the different vested partners that we work with to make sure that they are aware of and familiar with and understand the work of the State Library and recognize when they're using the services of the State Library. We know that our services are heavily used. They're very valued by the people who use them, um, but the State Library itself doesn't often get recognized to get the credit for the great work that we're doing. So really looking forward to being able to move forward with the educational campaign 
and use this information in some of the communication strategies and partner strategies that Aaron mentioned previously as part of the strategic plan. So. The logo looks great. I love it, Jenny. Thanks, Mike. We like it too. Um, just a, a little bit about it. it. It reflects, well, the hexagon um, was something that was important to our GIS staff, given the importance of, of hexagons in, in GIS work. Um, the open nature of the hexagon reflects open access to information. The prism reflects uh, taking in information and, and then sharing that as knowledge. Uh, and then the colors are drawn um, they reflect a prism, reflecting some of our natural resource and water information work, and, and the hues themselves come from the state of Montana flag. So really a lot of thought and care that went into creating that logo. And I think our staff are just really proud of it. That's all I have. <clears throat> That's the final piece of it. Does anyone have any questions? No, just to comment, the building you're moving into used to be a 7-Eleven back when I was young, but that was a long, long time ago. That's funny, Mike. Yeah, you could get three hot dogs for a dollar there in the in the mid 80s. I remember that. Oh, <laughs> gross. <laughs> yeah, they really were. And I'll, I'll give a beer to the first person who can give me a picture of it. There you go. <laughs> That's really funny. Yeah, we're excited to move into the new location. For anyone who's been in the State Library recently, you know that as, as we've moved to a digital first service model and have um, divested ourselves of our physical collections, we've kind of been rattling around in this, this big building for several years. And then with the flood, we've really been homeless now for months. And so staff have just been working amazingly hard to sort through and go through uh, furniture and materials and get rid of what we don't need and then um, be able to have be able to have a fresh start in this new location that really reflects the kind of service model that we want to have so it's an exciting time for us all right i just wanted to say hello to um, dan staley and dave ritz who were able to join us i don't know if there's anybody else who's joined us Okay, you have in your materials the first quarter financial report. Um, you can see a little bit of drop off in collections, um, probably not unanticipated given that um, we saw such significant growth during the pandemic, a little bit of leveling off in the last quarter or so. Um, I did note that the, uh, I think we have a, an incorrect um, date perhaps somewhere in the, in the memo itself, but um, and then you have our first quarter expenditures. So these were through October first of this fiscal year. Uh, you'll receive this the second quarter and and um, maybe the third, depending on the time of our April meeting. Uh, I, it, might, it might be a little too early for the third quarter there. Um, I did want to point out that uh, you see that the total amount of the budget is higher than collections. Um, and I, I don't want anyone to be alarmed about that. Um, the collections reflects the amount that's come in. It doesn't reflect the whole amount of revenue in the, in the account itself. Um, and we do have plenty of funding in the account. Uh, and in particular, that real-time network line that you see in the first quarter financial report is one-time only money that was appropriated during this last session to help fund the startup of the real-time network here in Montana. So uh, those expenditures uh, would either be reappropriated or drop off in, in our um, next fiscal year's report. So uh, we're using that opportunity as a way to make sure that we're effectively spending the dollars that we have in that account. Any questions about the financial report?
Okay. I believe I'm up next with the, yeah. the grant report. Yeah, it's um, it's going to be pretty, <laughs> uh, pretty short. I, I don't have any slides. However, um, the grants um, basically they're on their first uh, completed their first quarter. We've developed a new um, uh, temporary mechanism for reporting using Survey One Two Three, and a few of our off cycle grants um, awarded in 2022 are starting to close out. So. Um, we are moving forward. Nothing else to report there. And you noticed that there weren't any expenditures in the first quarter. That's pretty typical of our grant cycle. Yeah, not much. Questions for Aaron about the grants? All right. Troy. Troy wants to talk about talk to us about um, some efforts coming out of the USGS to freeze data editing in the NHD. Thanks for being with us, Troy. You bet. So did I share the correct screen there? You should be seeing the presentation. Yep. Excellent. So I have an important announcement for you today regarding MSDI hydrography and MSDI watershed boundaries. We did send an announcement out about this through Gov Delivery as well as through MAGIP, uh, but I wanted to provide the council some additional information and start to gather concerns and uh, start to think about what the impacts might be. So to start with just a quick refresh on what is MSDI hydrography and watershed boundary data set. <clears throat> I like to describe the hydrography as the mapping of the state streams and rivers, those blue lines that you see on maps. Um, but it's also important to point out that it's a whole lot more than that. It's also springs and it's waterfalls and it's stations and it's gauges and it's dams and wells. Um, we've got some numbers there, lakes and ponds, there's about 200,000 plus of them mapped. Uh, rivers and streams, there's about 170,000 uh, miles of stream mapped. So that's the NHD and then the WBD, that's the, um, the basins, uh, the areas of the state that drain to certain points. Um, that that um, is actually stewarded by the by the NRCS, but the MSL provides uh, some technical assistance there. I think what's important to point out with both these themes is that they're one of the, one of ours that are federally defined um, in the national data infrastructure, and that's important for today's discussion because it means that where USGS goes is where we go. At least that's the way it is right now. Uh, so the, the both of the data sets, the, the NHD and the WBD, are controlled and managed by the USGS. So editing, what do we do? What have we currently been doing? So the state library is the state NHD steward, and then the NRCS is the WBD steward, and then MSL provides technical assistance. So we're responsible for the editing, uh, communication, coordination with the USGS. I've got a few numbers here for you since 2015, so eight years. Uh, we've had about 2,000 edits requests that have been logged in our database and, and completed. Um, that's only counting what's been submitted directly to us. It's not a count of how many edits have been done. On the map on the right, you can see you know, where editing has happened over the last several years, uh, five to eight years. And then if we just think of the NHD and any sort of change that happens, and I just put these numbers here just to point out that there are a lot of changes that happen. Um, so you can look at this attribute of the NHD called the F date. Anytime there's a change on the database, that F date gets updated with the with the date that happens. So you can look at that. I did a query of the last five years on how many edits have happened on the NHD within Montana, and it's something like 50,000 plus edits to flow lines and something like 5,000 plus edits to water bodies. So um, a lot of changes happen on the NHD. Not all of those are done by the state library. Some of those are done by USGS. And, you know, that's the strength of being part of a national partnership is, you know, we've got additional resources there. Just my point here with this slide is just there, there is a lot that happens with the NHD. So what's happening now? And uh, the letter that I mentioned here was included in uh, the meeting materials today. So the NHD is transitioning from the NHD to the 3D hydrography program. I've, I've talked to the council uh, over the past few years about 3D hydrography program and how that's coming, how we've been laser focused on 
LIDAR and elevation derived hydro elevation derived hydrography because we know this is coming. Um, so within that letter, uh, USGS points out that given resource constraints, they cannot continue to uh, maintain the NHD database in parallel with development of the 3D hydrography program. So they're announcing an end to NHD editing. Um, that lockdown will happen December 31st, so coming up really quickly here. And then the watershed boundary data set will be locked down June 30th, 2023. So what does that mean? It means that the state library needs to receive any pending edits by December 5th is our expected date there in order to get those into the NHD before lockdown. Um, and I want to make sure I'm really clear here on that last bullet that this isn't a temporary stoppage of editing. This is a permanent end to maintenance of the NHD in its current form. Um, going forward, there will be static versions of the NHD and WBD available. Um, so that would be the path forward is that we'd continue to use the NHD for the next several years until 3DHP is ready. Um, the NHD is ultimately going to be replaced by the 3DHP. So just again, it's not it's not a pause or anything like that. It is an end to the NHD maintenance program. It's going to be a new data set. So taking a look at the 3D hydrography program, what is it? This is elevation derived or LIDAR derived hydrography data. We've known this has been coming. We like the direction. I think it's the right direction. Um, terrain and water influence and shape one another. They're interdependent. And if you think of the PLSS, that's what ties boundaries and um, parcels to the ground. You can think of elevation as what ties water to the ground because, of course, water flows downhill. So elevation defines where water's going. Uh, this is going to be a new hydrography data set that aligns with the uh, topo landscape, the real world. It's going to be vertically, horizontally, and temporarily aligned with high resolution elevation. That's important. Those are things that the current NHD is not, um, particularly the temporal alignment there. Uh, another big point is this is a state, it, it's going to lead toward more statewide, national, nationwide consistency. And if I just quickly go back, I meant to point this out on this slide. Looking at the image in the top left, that's a, a snapshot of the NHD around Fort Peck. And what I want to point out is just the consistency here. Some of this is mapped, it's just straight off old topos, you know, decades and decades old. Some of it is a more recent map. You can see that there's resolution differences here. So that's what this denser blue right here, if you're seeing my cursor compared to here, is just the difference in the resolution at what that was mapped. So the point there is that the current NHD is kind of a mix of resolutions, it's a mix of uh, temporal resolution. Some of it's new, some of it's old. Um, so there isn't a ton of consistency there. We can do better. Uh, 3D HP is also expected to bring a more frequent refresh um, somewhere in the five to eight year range. Um, I don't know if that's exactly true for Montana. We could be a little bit longer than that. But the point is that there's going to be at least a better refresh compared to what it is now. Um, some of it would be on when new LIDAR becomes available. So if an area got new LIDAR, then that might trigger an NHD update. So it might not be a statewide update every five to eight years, but at least those areas that get new data would be updated. Uh, I mentioned the primary access is going to be through web services. That is a, that's a good move, a good move for getting everyone using the same the same source of the information rather than have local copies around. There will still be some static versions available, but the main push will be to be using web services. And then a big one is just it's going to be a simplified model. And that's something we've been asking for a long time. It makes it really hard to maintain the current NHD. It's incredibly complex. The new model is expected to be simplified and focusing mainly on geometry, the network, and how the water flows. And then additional information like is it perennial or intermittent, all that sort of stuff will be related linked tables that can be easier, easy, more easily maintained by the states as opposed to built into the national model. This speaks to the complexity there. So on the right, that's the NHD um, current model. Um, just looking at that middle, these tables are different feature classes. There's about eight to 10 feature classes in NHD. The new model is on the left, or at least what's initially, it's just a draft at this point, but the 3DH pro, 3DHP um, would be broken down to just about three features, um, lines, point, points, lines, and polygons. And then everything else would be related and tied to it through various tables that the state could maintain. 
so I mentioned that uh, the library is responsible for editing. Um, this speaks to to what that role might change. Uh, I'd like to think that it mean would mean a little bit less workflow workload for us stewards. Um, it won't. It'll be a little bit change. It'll be a shift from focusing largely on the geometry, so derive, so creating the line work, to more focus on the attributes, assigning stuff as perennial or intermittent, for example. Um, the stewards will be responsible for kind of for um, revision review. So we'd be looking at this new 3DHP um, hydrography and identifying where changes are needed. But then the edits themselves, especially the edits to the geometry, will happen by the USGS. So looking at the timeline, this is where some of my concerns start to come up. Uh, the 3DHP timeline is a nine-year investment. That first year is going to be preparation. The next six is delineating the hydrography data. And then the next two would be inspection, processing, and publication. Uh, the second bullet there, as proposed, the effort would begin providing products and services to partners by the end of 2025. So if you think about what it means with NHD going static to the end of December, there's multiple years there where there would be this kind of interim between the NHD and the new 3D HP data. Just another look at that timeline, just pointing out that there's the USGS is kicking off a lot right now in fiscal year 23. This is the start of their fiscal year in October. They're into their first quarter. Um, just a lot going on there. And I just again point out here that the USGS message is that they do not have the resources to support NHD and 3DHP and they're making the switch. And I just mentioned that because I, I think we'd have a hard time, you know, states approaching the USGS and getting them to, to put a pause here. You know, their message is that the resources are just not there to do it. So they know it's inconvenient. They know it's a hassle, but they can't, um, they just can't support it. So thinking about impacts, particularly impacts to Montana, I've got a big question here. I'm not sure. Um, if we look at it in terms of um, a benefit study that was done in 2016 of, of what does it mean when a NHD feature is is off like what is the impact of that you see it throughout that table on the left there um that if a if a lake is missing or a gravel pit something like that is missing it was noted as highly impactful critically impactful fortunately there's not a whole lot of additional detail to know exactly what that means um but just pointing it out here is um you know there's it, it's important that that nhd um, represent um, correctly and then on the right, we've had a long, uh, long-standing document of the, uh, about the state uses of hydrography, and um, you know, as we know, it's used by Fish and Wildlife and the Department of Transportation and DEQ. DEQ uses it for water quality reporting. Um, so there's potentially some impacts here. I'm just not sure what it would mean if the NHD is static. What the impacts would be on those business activities. If we look at impacts in terms of what the 3D HP might, you know, the benefits that the 3D HP might bring, we've been asking for a long time, or we, we've documented our needs of what's need, of, within hydro. Our needs are that we need better positional accuracy. That's what we most of our editing is all about: is better aligning streams and rivers. With the 3D HP, that's expected to go to more like one to five thousand scale, so much more local resolution compared to what it is. Um, the state has generally said that um, we'd like data reviewed and updated on an annual basis. You know, that's a, a big goal there. It's probably not realistic, but the 3DH program does will be uh, a more refreshed more often. So there's an improvement there. Uh, we also need more local resolution data. Again, small impoundments, diversion, ditches, canals, that will also be picked up by 3DHP. And then lastly, we've been asking for stream order, whole stream identifiers, names, uh, particularly tie-in alias names that the Montana uses that aren't in the GNIS database, and then accurate flow periodicity, perennial inter intermittent or, or ephemeral. That's all been very difficult, challenging to maintain. Within the NHD, we haven't had a whole lot of success there in doing that. We think with 3DHP, it would mean that the state can better maintain their own tables that are linked to the NHD rather than having to integrate it and build it into the NHD model. So we think there'll be improvements there. 
So my concerns that I want to bring to the council, um, the 3DHP program is going to be a lot like the LIDAR program in that it's a collaborative community funded model, just like 3DEP was. You'd be expecting states and partners to bring in 25 to 40% cost match. Um, as we know, Montana would struggle to bring in funding there, you know, compared to other states. A um, little worried that that may mean that Montana lags behind and that that the 3DHP in Montana is getting done more on that back end of those nine years rather than the front end. Um, you see the note, the quote right from the letter there, the strategy will prioritize acquisitions where there are multiple requirements and high potential for leveraging funding. So I think if Montana isn't able to bring in some cost share and some funding there that um, other states are gonna get higher priority. Other concern there, that last bullet, 3DHP is largely conceptual at this time. We have received kind of a draft model, but there's still a lot of questions about like what happens with reach codes and data that's tied to the network and all that sort of stuff. So a little bit of a leap of a faith of faith here. Um, the 3DHP is, is largely conceptual at this point. So some potential actions that I've identified, uh, wanna continue to seek additional information from the USGS and other states. Uh, we've acted, we're actively participating on, on several NISJIC communities. One is the NHD state stewards. Um, that's states, states across the nation uh, sharing needs, uh, sharing uh, what's working, what's not, what are we gonna do uh, in the interim as 3DHP is developed. And then also the 3DHP for the nation interest group. That's all about the development of 3DHP and how states can you know, make our needs known and take those to the USGS. So there is some really good activity going on ac across the nation of trying to address some of this and working with other states about what they're doing. I've considered um, writing a letter to the USGS, trying to explain the impacts and how, um, you know, for this ending in December, what that would mean for us. Uh, I know other states are considering that or perhaps already have um, sent letters to the USGS. Um, ultimately, where I've come to, though, is I do not see the USGS pivoting on this. They've been very clear that they're, you know, they know this is an inconvenience. They know it's a problem, but they just they don't have the resources to make the switch and run them in parallel. So I think there'd be limited success there to sending a letter and getting them to pivot at all. There's things that we could do with the model. You know, if there's going to be major impacts, um, we could try to maintain a Montana version of the NHD for a while or some other model that works for some of the state agencies. Uh, we could try to match that with the 3DHP schema that's coming if that's possible. Um, I know other states are considering that option that they'll continue to do some editing on NHD kind of on their own, knowing that it's not going into a national database or anything like that. We could also support kind of one-off temporary solutions for state agencies that run into them. You know, if they've got missing water bodies and stuff like that, just mapping those within their own database and, and keeping them that way would be just fine. And then keeping track of those edits so that as 3DHP does come out, um, we know where those edits would need to happen and where we can cross check that data set. So I wanna just conclude with this. This is just kind of my thought, my big picture. This is the way I see it. You know, this is a significant change. And these first, first few years are gonna be really challenging. Um, however, in the end, Montana Hydro will be better off. This is the future of hydrography mapping in the water information system. So um, see, the, see the inconvenience, see the struggles here. No, it's going to be challenging, but I'm also a pretty, um, I'm in agreement that this is the way that hydro needs to go, and I'm behind it. That's what I have. Um, if there are any questions, discussions, I'd be particularly interested in hearing if anyone's aware of impacts that this will cause um, and suggestions for starting to reach reach folks and talk about this. I think the one thing I wanted to comment on is how important that the LIDAR program is going to be in achieving this LE Hydro, um, this next phase. And so I think we'll probably have to pour a little more time and effort into trying to get more partners. It's I know Troy and I've we've done a lot, Troy's done a lot, but we just haven't seen the success that other states have. And perhaps this is um, this move will help fuel that. 
Hey, Troy, this is Alan at the VLM and Billings. Uh, I've got some very uh, good contacts that I think you should touch base with here at the, the BLM that are, are probably would be some good partners in this. So reach out to me and I'll make sure and get those connections made for you. Will do, Alan. Thank you. Yeah, we're a big user of this. I know um, our hydro folks um, would definitely be uh, very interested in working with you. I, I, I can't speak for them, but I would assume that they would be. be. I'd be curious to what's going on in North and South Dakota as well. And, and we do have hydro contacts over there too. Good question, Alan. Sure. Looks like we've got a couple with their hands up, but one quick question for Alan and I guess other age, other federal agencies as well. Um, have there been uh, announcements and action within the federal government? I mean, has this been communicated from USGS to BLM and the other federal agencies? This is this is actually the first I've heard of it. Hmm. But again, I don't I don't run in those circles of the hydro folks, so they yeah. may be well aware of it. I, this is the first I've heard of it. So thanks yeah. for presenting this. Yeah, thanks for, for um, this is Matt from you know, Fish and Wildlife Service. I I, I think I, I may have heard a little bit from USGS folks. I, I have a project I'm work, working on with the Mahatna cutthroat trout in Nevada that may have mentioned uh, this, but a lot of them are, are kind of going rogue and doing their, their own uh, 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 spatial updates too because of bad, uh, uh, bad spatial re resolution of, of hydro. Um, since I have, since I'm, uh, I got the 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 mic here. Um, as far as uh, partners uh, contributing funds in the near future, Troy, should we just kind of stay tuned? Uh, you know, should we should we prime our our um, our organization's leadership for trying to get together some funds, or is it a little too early? I don't think it's too early. What we're hearing from USGS is they'd be announcing the the BAA which is their program for accepting partner funds the end of um, the, in October of next year. So it'd be coming out at the beginning of the next fiscal year. So I think, you know, funds this year, this current fiscal year might not be used in that, but I think prepping for the following fiscal year, as soon as that BA is announced uh, would be appropriate. Thank you. Yeah, and to your original question, uh, as far as announcing this Fish and Wildlife Service wide, I, this is the first I've heard of it. Hmm. I think now would be the time too that um, over the next probably couple months, Troy and I will put together a, a hydro working group meeting. Mm -hmm. And so we can start working on the next steps forward. Don? Yeah, it's a question for Troy. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to answer this or not just yet, but do you know uh, in the data if there's going to be any tie or link between the 1 to 24 and the 3D? I don't know for sure. I'd be very surprised if there is not, but I haven't seen any, any kind of documentation or any real thing that gives me a ton of confidence there. Now, like Washington has a ton of data linked to the current NHD, and I just don't see how that switch would happen over to 3DHP without having a way of addressing. Um, however, I'm migrating some of the 24K stuff over. Uh, but, but it is, I mean, it is going to be a full replacement of the geometry. So, uh, you know, it's not like they're conflating and bringing over some of the 24k geometry it's it's going to be new derived stuff from lidar okay well i guess we'll just have to stay tuned but i mean the the nhd in its current native format doesn't meet our needs as an agency as it is so yep. most likely we'll end up having to just maintain our own hydrography layer for the uh foreseeable yep. future as this stuff kind of shakes out but yeah, it doesn't it doesn't look super promising, at least from from our end, if there's not going to be a tie to the one to 24. And if we still don't get whole streams and whole stream identifiers and all right. of that. So but uh, love to be able to have a seat on that working group, too, as a state agency that uses the hydro part of it. For sure. Thanks. In addition to the working group, I wanted just to remind everyone that that um, Troy did mention it, but NISJIC has. So the National States Geographic Information Council, there are several 
there are two groups now. There's the LIDAR group and then yeah. there's the LA, mm -hmm. the 3DHP. Um, as council members, you are you are welcome to participate um, in those groups. And so if you're interested and you want to hear the national discussions, please let me know and, and we'll make sure we can get you, um, uh, if you are not currently a member, we can get you hooked into those uh, to membership and then also on those groups. Reminder, Erin. Let's see. Yeah, thanks, Erin. I'd, I'd like that if at all possible. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks. Sorry, sorry Jenny. Note in the chat that Brian Shaw said he um, did not recall hearing about this, but not tuned in to NHD. Other questions or discussion? Troy, thanks for bringing this to the council. This was noted as an action item when we were talking about possibly having the council endorse a letter to the NHD. Uh, and as Troy said, um, it sounds like that might not be an effective use of this council, uh, given the response that we would likely see. I think it's better for us to continue to be in communication with all of you and help with that coordination and um, really encourage all of you as you're hearing things to share that information with Troy as well, so we can have kind of a two-way flow of communication. Troy, is there anything else from the council that might be helpful for you? No, not th not that I can think of. I think getting the hydrography working group stood back up, getting the partners back in on that, bringing in the national partners and starting to think about funding is going to be the main thing. Like, like I said, my, my main concern is that Montana is going to be one of the last, like exactly like we saw with LIDAR and elevation. And so I want to try to be on top of that and communicate to USGS that, you know, there's, we have hard time bringing in cost share as a state and that you know like they did with 3 debt they're, they're going to be need some other solutions for west out west here great troy the um i wasn't sure based on these <clears throat> the land plan was published over a month ago and based on these recent <clears throat> letter that you received if you wanted to update your portion and that'll be in two, um, the next up item up on the agenda. So in two items. So if you do want to make an update <clears throat> um, and add, I don't, I'm not, not quite sure you need to, um, but if you wanted to, that would be the time to do that. Okay. Yeah. I'll revisit that. I'm not quite sure how I reworded it, but I, I know some of it, it, it ends up being what starting next July. Is that right? Mm -hmm. so yeah. You know, with the with the editing freeze, we we have to get all our pending queued edits done before December. So that ends up getting out. So I think there was a bullet to that that maybe I need to take out. Okay. All right. All right. The next item on the agenda uh, is an action item. Uh, we're asking for the council's endorsement of changes to the Land Information Act. This endorsement would then go to the State Library Commission for their acceptance at their December 7th commission meeting. Uh, and then ultimately that would launch a legislative process for us to start uh, making improvements to the Land Information Act during the legislative session. As we talked about at your September 15th meeting, this work falls under the governor's red tape relief initiative. We've been working with the Lieutenant Governor and I'm so grateful to have Emily Dardis from her team helping to advise us and re review statutes and, and make some of the recommendations that we've seen. Uh, why don't we go ahead and um, if you can bring up the changes, I just wanted to, to talk through some of the substantive changes. Some of the changes are, are more just wording changes. They don't really impact the, the substance of the act itself. Um, and some of them are more substantive. I also wanted to thank Dan Staley and Lee Mackholtz for serving on a subcommittee with us. We met a couple of different times between the last meeting and this meeting to get their input on how we move forward with some of these changes. 
so the, the, I think the first and, and perhaps the most consequential change that we're proposing is a, a change of the name from the Montana Land Information Act to the Montana Geospatial Information Act, and then replacing the word land throughout with the word geospatial. This recommendation um, came after considerable reflection uh, over the, the last few months and reflects that a couple of points. Uh, one, it modernizes the language within the act so that it is more current. I think when the act was originally passed back in 2005, um, mapping concepts, the concepts of GIS and geospatial were really nascent in our culture. Uh, and now with our phones being so ubiquitous and the use of mapping technology uh, just being really readily available, the concept of geospatial work uh, is much more prevalent in our culture and I think much more uh, read readily accepted within the uh, vested partners in the community that we're working with. Um, it also reflects the fact that uh, while everything that we do ties back to the land, land isn't necessarily uh, the best terminology to wholly encompass the work of the Montana Spatial Data Infrastructure and the work of this, this council and others. And two, there are other agencies and other boards, specifically the Montana Land Board, um, that deal with issues of land and land acquisition. And it, from time to time, it's created some confusion between our work and their work. So really that's one of the most significant changes that you see reflected throughout the document. I'm gonna go through some of these changes and then we'll, I'll open it up for discussion and questions. If you wanna keep scrolling down, um, so under the, the duties and responsibilities of the State Library, one of the other significant changes that we talked about was getting rid of the language in the Act that requires that annual land plan and place, replacing it with language that still requires planning but doesn't hold us to that annual cycle. And you've heard me talk about some of the challenges that that annual cycle has created for us over the years. Uh, the language still holds the State Library to act in accordance with the plan and to create the plan in consultation with this particular council and to, to, to still um, report back and um, be accountable to this council. Uh, the statute provides some language about what should be included in the plan. And then further down in some of the, the changes to rules, you'll see uh, language about creating rules around the plan. Um, another substantive change is the uh, elimination of the reporting requirement. That recommendation actually came out of the governor's office initially, uh, just trying to get rid of any ancillary reporting that's done that doesn't necessarily have a lot of use. And we want to make sure that what is in the act uh, is applied and is, is meaningful to our work. And then we talked about uh, changes to the makeup and structure of the council itself at your September meeting. So what we've proposed is not necessarily reducing the number of seats by half, but a fairly significant reduction in the number of seats on the council in order to help us be, I hope, more effective and more efficient. Um, so you'll see we've um, suggested reducing the number of state director uh, of delegates from four to one. The state does have a GIS managers group that meets regularly that includes the, the various GIS leads from the state and, and that work would continue and our hope would be that um, through this seat there could be some representation back from that GIS managers group to this council. Um, proposing reducing the local government represent, representatives from three to two. We wanted to make sure that we still allowed for important local government representation, especially given the diversity of local governments um, 
from urban to rural, large and small, we want to try to make sure that we are allowing for enough representation that has that kind of balance. We're also proposing reducing the number of federal representatives from four to two and not necessarily naming the federal departments, rather just naming the federal government. And we think this is important because we know that there are a number of other federal departments like the census and um, Homeland Security that are actively involved in GIS and, and with the existing language wouldn't necessarily have the opportunity to have a seat on the council. Um, similarly, proposing to reduce the um, number of seats that represent um, the geographic information systems representatives from the public sector, eliminating that public utility requirement altogether. That doesn't mean we couldn't have a representative from public utilities, um, but not necessarily naming utilities as a named entity to, to be represented. Um, and then you'll see we recommend uh, removing the requirement for legislative representation. Our work hasn't necessarily been of the, the, the type that directly informs the work of legislators. And I have reached out to our current council members as well as past council members to ask for any concerns that they might have with this change. And I, I haven't heard back from any of them. And then you'll see that we're proposing language that would allow for staggered terms. One of the big challenges for us is that the entire council as currently written, um, their terms end, many people get reappointed, but to have that kind of hiatus from July until often September uh, is problematic and, and um, with people turning over, it can often lead to a loss of institutional memory. And as, as I said, this was a very large council and it was often difficult for the governor's office to go through the reappointment process uh, for an entire council all at once. So we're proposing three years staggered terms and there's some temporary language here uh, that would require us to work with the governor's office to set those staggers over the, the course of the next three years. Can go ahead and, and keep going. Um, not a lot of substantive changes to the duties of the council itself. You'll see there under D, um, the just a slight language change about providing recommendations to the state library in determining the grants awarded rather than development and management of the grants. Uh, the council doesn't necessarily directly advise us on how we manage the grants, although we do seek input from the council. The council's role has always really been in helping us to determine the priorities of the grants through our planning processes, and then in determining uh, which grants are awarded and how much. And so this language better reflects the roles that um, the council plays in that kind of effort. Um, just some cleanup language in, in making sure that the information about the account itself um, allows for that kind of grant funding, making it very clear that we use those funds for, for grant purposes. Uh, and then similar information in the distribution of funds. And then um, if you keep scrolling down, the other substantive change, adding language in about the grant program itself, that language did not previously exist in statute. So some sort of high level umbrella language that exists in statute, followed by changes to the administrative rules themselves, directing the state library to, through rulemaking, um, both establish the, the processes and provisions for the planning process as well as the grant making process. Some of those rules already exist uh, and assuming that this kind of legislation would pass next summer, we would begin the process to uh, refine the rules that currently exist to make sure that those rules align with these kinds of statutory changes. So those are the changes to the act that 
we are proposing again our, our process would be to propose these changes to the state library commission and then continue the process of working with the governor's office to seek sponsorship and go through the legislative process to adopt these changes happy to uh, answer any questions hear your comments or, or concerns that you might have about what we're proposing Jenny, this is Alan. Just a question regarding the federal government representation. Uh, did, did any of this come from the governor's office in any way to where they didn't want to be restricted to Department of Ag or Department of Interior, but wanted to be more open to other federal government agencies? That, that's a recommendation that we made, Alan. It's not coming from the governor's office. I, I routed this around a little bit throughout the agency here, and I, I did get some some feedback as far as um, it seems to be. I know, Jenny, you said you didn't feel like this was very substantial. I can never say that word. Um, I, I got some feedback that they thought it was a fairly drastic overhaul, really, of MLIA, you know, taking the word land and replacing that with geospatial really does, in my mind, change. Um, what this this code really means and what it could mean to um, state agencies. There's there's plenty in here of additional, it seems like, responsibilities when it comes to uh, technology. And uh, then in addition to that, kind of reducing the representation by state agencies that definitely have a vested interest in all of that is is I think a little bit of a concern. Do you have any recommendations, Don? Um, yeah, I mean, I think some of the, the recommendations would be, you know, maybe going back to trying to find a word that is maybe a little bit more appropriate than geospatial since many state agencies collect information, which we all consider geospatial information. Um, the way this act kind of looks right now is it, it looks like uh, the state library would be um, really kind of taking on responsibility for some of that information. So um, I, it just feels to me like maybe going back and, and looking at the scope of this again and making sure that uh, where state agencies, at least since that's my career, um, that we have the ability to make the decisions that are most appropriate for our agencies. I just feel like if you read this literally, it, it could mean that some of that authority and responsibility is, is no longer in our hands. So I, I wanna, kind of add something to that a little bit don because I, I kind of agreed with you a little bit till i reread it again and when i kind of started up at the top under purpose and if you read the very first sentence under purpose it, i noticed and i don't know if this was by design jenny but that very first sentence was not changed it still is about the digital formats of the natural and artificial land characteristics. Instead of inserting geospatial there, the purpose was left focused on um, what we currently think of that the land council oversees. And I took it as more of a, a upgrade of the language throughout the rest of the document and less of a change in scope of what the council was was overseeing. But that was just my observation, Jenny. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly the intent, um, really just to modernize the language, um, except that the purpose didn't include that grant making role. There wasn't any kind of substantive change to the purpose of the act itself, which is, I think, where you would see that change in scope. Um, I guess, you know, to your concern, Don, similarly, agencies collect land information and uh, that's not a concern that's been voiced over the last 
15 plus years that the act has been in place um, referring to land information. I don't know if there's specific language in here that you feel is problematic um, that um, maybe oversteps the scope of other agencies. Uh, the 90-1-404B where it says, you know, working with all the partners, uh, prioritize needs, collect, develop, maintain, and disseminate geographic information systems, geospatial information, and geospatial technologies. Some of that, in my mind, if you read that literally, means that you will be working with us, but that that authority is in MSL's hands to be able to, um, what's the right word? They, not, I'm trying to say, how I'm trying to say it. Um, it just doesn't feel to me like that is necessarily the intent of a, I'll just say the, the land plan when it was first developed. I understand the need to prioritize and collect information and to help get, disseminate that, but I'm not sure where the line gets blurred there when it comes to geographic information systems and technologies. That seems to me to be an overstep right there. I will, I, can I add something, Jenny? Sure. We've, we do not name the Montana spatial data infrastructure in code. Um, and I think that uh, this, this, that's essentially what this is about, um, B, is, is making sure that, that um, the Montana spatial data infrastructure layers, however, there are other layers that aren't necessarily defined as MSDI that are included here. And so I think it would be limiting to us to add MSDI into code, and it would also be limiting to us to add, you know, all the other data layers that are relevant to the work that that uh, the Montana State Library does, and so I just want to be careful to um, to make sure that we we don't limit ourselves in 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 the statute. And um, another thing to mention is with the RTN, you know, that's a part of um, the work that we're doing now. That's a part of the information that we're gathering. It's also part of the technology. Um, um, that we're implementing. So that's that's another thing to mention here, Jenny. Don, I can see your concern here. Um, I, the intent was not to add this verbiage in a way that would um, mean that the state library is the only person who uh, prior, creates those priorities um, for other agencies, collects and disseminates and being, you know, the sole source of anything. Is there, is there some kind of verbiage that we can add to this that, that uh, you know essentially ensures that it, it isn't construed that it is saying that we will do these things on behalf of or or for other agencies. I don't know. Am I, I hope I'm making sense there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sorry, I'll try you on. No, I I think you're you're getting at what I'm saying, and I, and I realize that the intent is not there to do that. But again, if we read this literally in five years, you know, from now, it could just be misinterpreted and that's that's my concern that it could be misinterpreted as far as what the state library's roles are versus what the roles are of other entities in state local governments um, to manage collect disseminate the information that they are responsible for that's that's what i'm sensitive to at this point mm -hmm. Don, I don't know if this helps at all, but there, there's nothing in the statute that gives the state library any kind of regulatory authority to 
assume authority over the work of other entities, uh, including state entities. I think that would have to be added for there to be any any real teeth to something like that. My only concern there, Jenny, is that it's not it, it may not be in here, but then you've got a, a council again where you've limited the amount of state agency participation to be able to, to speak to any of those to, to many of those things down the road. We'd have one was it one representative at a state agency level that, that we would have to work through for some of those things. Do you think your agency would be more comfortable if that if there were two state representatives? You know, I, I don't I don't know. I haven't asked that question. I haven't, <clears throat> excuse me, Brian Collins here. I haven't asked that question um, internally at, at DNRC either, but I, I'm with Don that the um, reduction from four to one, I would be more comfortable um, from four to two as well. I know we talked about this a little bit at the last meeting as well, just the, um, the sort of diverse, expansive nature of, of GIS in general, and then what it means to each state agency individually. Um, and in particular, if we're considering two federal agency representatives, I, I feel that at least two state agency representatives would be better than a singular. I know that we have the forum of the uh, state uh, GIS managers forum as a conduit for information as well. Um, but for for topics uh, like Troy just presented um, two people versus one as another conduit to communicate that information to the stakeholders who um, might be significantly impacted, just sort of doubles the potential through that you know communication vector uh, fr from my perspective. So uh, understand the, the need to be more efficient and uh, reduce uh, red tape. And I like two better than one for state representation. Any other discussion? I would agree with Brian. I, I think you need two state representatives. Uh, I, I'm okay with the two federal. I think that's adequate. Okay. If we make that addition, Jenny, that will go from the 12 proposed to 13. Okay. So we're back to an odd number, which I think which we wanted to try to get to. Yeah, yeah. If, I may, if I may make a suggestion, um, <clears throat> with not having as many state directors, um, and that's really our method of becoming involved in NISJIC, could we open that up to the GIS managers group? That's a good question. I'd certainly love to find a way, Aaron, if that's yeah. possible. I think I'll, I can research that. Yeah. If the GIS managers group was an extension, some sort of an extension of the council in a way. Let me look into that. I think that's a great idea though, Brandy. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Another idea that I um, have been noodling on here is the potential for sort of ex officio membership of this council such that it's a non-voting role but some of those benefits like brandy just mentioned could potentially be available as well i don't know logistically how that would work but potential option i think look into how to provide that kind of benefit to to other people Personally, I like the change to the word geospatial. We've done that at the BLM just recently. 
and uh, it, it's worked out really well in all of our language and our naming conventions and such and our committees and such. Uh, it's just a lot more inclusive. Um, but but yeah, I think what uh, Don was saying up above was, you know, we're kind of intermixing the geospatial with geographic information systems. So we're not like out there setting up GIS systems per se. I guess maybe the state library is on, in some of the small counties and such. But we're more working on the geospatial data not dictating a system that they have to use or operate under. Yeah, you know, they're, they're, the State Library does have authority to um, do things like procure software to support the next generation 911 uh, data work that's ongoing. Like Aaron said, we're supporting the, the real-time network. Um, and so in, in those ways, the, the duties of the State Library do go beyond the, the data itself, although those technologies are, are necessary to support the data. In that, addition to that, oh, go ahead. I was just gonna say that was the intent behind being more inclusive in the language beyond just information. In addition to that, Alan, it, um, I'm, I'm assuming that federal agencies are going to start aligning the language as well because of the Geospatial Data Act, the federal act. Um, and so our our language is somewhat common with the geospatial, the federal geospatial data act as well. Is there any other discussion? I would like to just thank Jenny for um, her work on this and, and then how the meetings were ran and, and they, um, the composition of the, the, the team that, that helped with this. Um, it just was from, from uh, just very much appreciated how, how much heavy lifting you did, Jenny, and then how organized it was when we did meet. So thank you for that. Thanks, Dan. And again, I really wanna thank Emily. She did so much research for us. Um, so I would like to entertain a motion to endorse these recommendations with a change to the state appointment from what was four to one from four to two. Is someone willing to make that motion? I would make the motion to approve with the noted change, Jenny. Thanks, Mr. Mike. Mike. Is there a second? I'll second, Eric. Eric, Mike and Eric. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Is there anyone opposed? Aye. Don? Yep. Are there any abstentions? Jenny, would you please put me down as abstaining from all voting? And, and I'm totally in agreement with everything, but the Department of Interior attorneys, as you know, have to get our documents together so that I can participate more fully. Understand. Yeah, Alan, yep. thank you. Yep. Alan yes. and Matt, too? Yes, okay. please. And, and I did receive some correspondence back, so it looks like we're awfully close to that. Uh, the, the attorney I'm working with is on maternity leave, so okay. uh, it, it shouldn't be too much longer. Sounds good. So we have one opposed and two abstaining. So with that, the motion carries, thank you. And I do encourage you to attend the meeting of the commission on December 7th, if you wanna have um, additional discussion about this. And, and then of course, there's a, a ways to go through the legislative process itself. And Jenny, I can look into, I'll be sure to look into the NISDA question and, um, 
I can report back to the council when I find an answer. Great. All right, moving on to the FY24 land information plan is, does anybody else just have a really hard time wrapping their head around the fact that this is, we're talking about FY24? Just where does the time go? Um, we have posted the um, draft plan that you saw in September for the, the requisite 30 days. Uh, we didn't receive any comments, so we did not have a subsequent work session of the, the council to consider any comments. So at this point, um, we're happy to take any further discussion, um, but are ready to ask the council to endorse the FY24 land plan. Again, this plan two goes to the State Library Commission for action at their December 7th meeting. Erin, is there anything else you want to add about the plan? Um, no, um, I think we've we've talked about the land, um, or you touched on it during the MLA review, and just the fact that we're kind of recycling past plans because we don't work. <laughs> a lot, not a lot changes for us from year to year. Rather, um, we take a more strategic approach. Um, we did work with all the um, we did work with all the stewards and um, and got their updates for their top um, three to five updates for their themes. Um, and you'll see a lot of the similar information. I did add a section um, for RTN um, underneath the uh, stewardship, working with Kazi, our RTN administrator. So um, not a lot of big changes. I didn't know if Troy was on, if he decided that he wanted to maybe update the hydro piece. Other than that, um, you'll see a lot of the similar um, um, pieces and um, priorities in this plan as past years. Not a lot of changes from FY 2023. Yeah, I'm still on there. And the, uh, it looks like if we just take out the such as, <clears throat> such as completing outstanding HD edits, it'll be, uh, good. Okay. Do that. Any other discussion? This might not be the, this is Dan. This might not be the 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 place for it, but was there any um with Kazi, was there any discussion about um, throwing LDPs into his management? Jenny, you want to take that or you want? Um, I know that Evan and I have had that conversation. I don't have a lot of up-to-date information. Aaron, I don't know if you do. Yeah, not, not yet, not at this point, but um, I think that what we have on our agenda is to, um, or our, our task list is to um, get a working group together um, to discuss LDPs. And I'm a bit like Jenny, it's, it's, it blows me away that we're talking about fiscal year 24 already, but that probably is something that should be, should, should be considered. Okay. Um... Aaron, maybe just including. I could include it. You go ahead, Jenny. I was just going to say, um, I'm not sure if it would go with RTN or um, a separate bullet, but um, just see, seating that, um, seating that working group. Yeah, I think I want to put it in um, GIS coordination priorities. Okay, I think that makes sense. Thanks, Dan. You bet. I, I'm not trying to create more work for you. Sorry. <laughs> All 
other discussion or suggestions? Okay, so I'm going to put coordinate with the Montana Association of Geographic Information Professionals. Marls, you guys are seeing my handiwork as we go. <laughs> um, and the council, I'll just put general other stakeholders to explore the implementation of low distortion. Directions. Is Brian um, Shaw still on the line? Say if there's any other specific language he thinks might be relevant, I would take that into consideration too. Looks like he's gone. Okay, thank you. Okay, does anyone have any feedback on this specific addition? <clears throat> Coordinate with the Montana Geographic Information Professionals, Montana Association of Registered Land Surveyors, and the Montana Land Information Advisory Council and other stakeholders to explore the implementation of low distortion projections for Montana. It looks good, Aaron. All right. Okay. Any other suggestions? Hearing none, is there a motion to uh, um, endorse the FY24 land plan as amended? I would go ahead. This is Eric Spang, but I, I I would make that motion, Jenny. Thanks, Eric. Is there a second? I'll second it. Thanks, Valentine. Any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And Alan and Matt will note you as abstaining. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, please. Okay. But Great. agree. Yes, understood. Off the record. <laughs> understood. All right. With that, the motion carries. Thank you. Uh, our last action item is approval of our uh, meeting dates for this next year. Erin, I'll let you lead that. Matt, can you pull that up for me, please? Thank you. Um, so this this is basically sticking to our um, our normal schedule um, that we've had in the past for council meetings, um, trying to avoid holidays and um, other types of uh, state events and, and of also aligning the first meeting with the MAGIP annual conference that will be um, down in Bozeman uh, this next year for Big Sky Geocon. So um, we try to always have that in coordination with Big Sky Geocon, so the dates are um, April 5th, um, May 12th, September 15th, and November 16th. And the reason why we have the May 12th meeting is, um, I think this past year, I think, did, oh no, we, we canceled one because of sicknesses, but um, 
is the um, restrictions in the statute, uh, excuse me, not statute, the rules um, for the grants. And so um, I think the deadline is May 15th every year that those have to be awarded um, or prioritized by the council and then awarded by the commission. And so um, that May 15th will give us, uh, or May 12th will give us that, uh, meet that deadline for the council. Right. Is there a motion to approve the 2023 meeting dates? So moved. This is Mike. And a second. I would second. Did you see that note from Don Anderson that May 12th is a graduation date? Montana State University's graduation. So I don't know if anyone else has kids graduating, but congratulations, Don. That's that's exciting. Yeah, that just uh, that's actually a Friday. Let's amend that to the eleventh, Jenny. The eleventh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd be better. Good, good catch, Don. Thanks. Um, Mike, can I get a uh, uh, an amended motion to accept that friendly amendment? Bet I move to approve the amended. The 2023 land council schedule. Is there a second? I'll second. This is Eric. Okay, thanks, Eric. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any, any opposed? And Alan and Matt abstain. Right. All right. Thank you. We have our 2023 meeting dates. Uh, Aaron, let's talk about Mizjik Midyear. Absolutely. So who doesn't want to go to Pittsburgh in February? <laughs> um, basically, the um, Mizjik as an organization meets twice annually uh, in the fall for the um, the annual conference. And then in the mid-year meeting is kind of more of a working group meeting. It's, they're both really wonderful conferences and um, we definitely have the budget to take um, at least two um, uh, council members to, um, uh, to the conference. And so we wanted to get um, any of those who are interested now so we can start the planning. We'll have to submit all the paperwork to get the um, the travel approved in time for us to attend. Um, but like I said, it's a really wonderful um, working group meeting. You'll get to meet your counterparts from other state councils um, and then my counterparts um, and other GIS national leads. And so um, right now I would um, like to answer any questions you might have, but also hopefully pique your interest to attend. Um, now Brandy has gone and Mike Boselman has gone multiple conferences in the past and Lee Mackoltz has gone. And so um, I'm trying to think if anyone else on the council has gone on behalf, but um, would like to, um, if you have any questions, they're, they're on the line to answer some of those as well. Um, and then in addition to that next, I know all of you are up for reappointment and then the makeup of the council could change, but um, next fall, it will be in New Orleans. And so keep that on your own well, late summer, uh, keep that on your, uh, your um, I guess in the back of your minds and we'll probably start the process to try to get folks uh, sometime in April just to get interest, even though things could change. So any questions, anyone wanna put your hand up now to head to one of the colder cities in the <laughs> Midwest? <laughs> Unfortunately, football season will be over with at that time, so you won't be able to hit up a game, but Pittsburgh's a really cool place and the content um, will be really fantastic. Yeah, I would second that, Aaron. It's it's a lot to be learned and good to connect with your peers. And Pittsburgh is a nice city. I know I can't go because I have the legislature here, but yeah. if someone from the council did go, It's it's worth it. I have a favorite cider house there, if anybody needs a tip. 
Aaron, I'd like to be on the tentative list. I, I'd have to confirm the dates for sure, but it sounds uh, uh, intriguing to me. It'd be a new experience for me. I've been looking for other conference professional development opportunities that aren't uh, ESRI dominated per se. And uh, I can follow up with you in the near term if that works. Absolutely. And the dates are February 26th. Um, they don't have the website up to date yet with an actual um, uh, agenda. It will be, they'll be working on it soon though. February 26th through March 2nd. And um, it's at the Doubletree Hilton downtown. So I will put you on the list. And just because you've gone recently doesn't mean you can't attend again if you have the time. So keep that in mind as well, Brandy. Thanks, Aaron. Yep. All right. Are there any other business or announcements? Is there any public comment? Any public comment? Hearing none, we can adjourn. Thank you all so much, and we'll see you in April. Thanks. Have a happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Thanks, 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 everyone. Thank you. Well, thank, thank you. Happy holidays. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Come thank see you. us at our new place. Three dogs for a dollar. <laughs> 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 maybe, maybe I'll make <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious.